these super long-lived people around the world, they eat a lot of sausages and salamis and prosciutto. And I'm going, that doesn't make any sense. They ought to be dead as doornails. They ought to be you know, riddled with cancer. They ought to have heart disease. In fact, Toulouse, France, I mean, they eat foie gras, they eat sausages, cassoulet, and they have the lowest heart disease rate in wow. all of France. I want to talk about what you've developed, and we'll talk about how all this came about. But if anyone who's read my last few books is aware, uh, there is a really mischievous, in my opinion and others, sugar molecule that is present in beef, lamb, pork, it's present in milk, that is called New 5 gc right. The G is capitalized. That we uh, humans have a very similar sugar molecule called nu 5 ac They differ by one molecule of oxygen. That's it. Otherwise, they're identical. The lining of our gut has nu 5 ac The lining of our blood vessels has nu 5 ac The lining of our blood-brain barrier has nu 5 ac The lining of our joints have nu 5 ac Sadly, in human studies, when you and I consume new 5 gc right. it's rapidly absorbed in our small intestine, and our immune system thinks it is a really nasty molecule. It hates it, and it develops antibodies to it literally instantaneously. Now, years ago, uh, I wrote that because these molecules are so similar, that perhaps we attack our new 5 ac by mistake because they're so similar. And that might explain why there's multiple suggestions and studies that eating, quote, red meat is associated with heart disease, with memory loss, with arthritis, and even cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, association does not mean causation. But if anybody has read uh, Gut Check, it's become more than association because we now know that new 5 gc can substitute for new 5 ac in the lining of our gut, in the lining of our blood vessels, in our blood-brain barrier, and in our joints, and can be actively attacked by our immune system, which explains a whole lot about how mischievous this molecule is. But you've been really interested in grass-fed, grass-finished beef products pork for a very long time. And you and I, a couple of years ago, uh, you said, hey, you know, uh, why don't you endorse my products? They're really good. And right. I said, ah, Jimmy, my good, good friend, I, I really can't do it because of new 5GC. Right. And <laughs> so I threw the ball in your court and tell us what you did. Well, we had developed a line of products along this direction that was uh, infusing them and curing them with polyphenols. And polyphenols were causing the reaction to change the meat in, in a very positive direction. And that's what we both enjoy, but that new O5GC came out of the corner and, you know, bit me. So. You shared research with me. You've always been an inspiration to point me down the road to chase these things, you know, like a crazy dog. But I chased it down, and uh, there was a blip on a radar screen of a report that showed that cured sausages were actually a little bit lower than the, the raw product. Yep. Uh, and in some cases, like in a liver pate, it actually is more, so that's really not a culinary technique that should be applied. So. I really started to look at, you know, what bacteria was used, what cultures were used in the culturing of these meats, as well as what probiotics would be good for the stomach. So, you know, in simple terms, the famous Lactobactobacillus, that family of cultures is really good for your gut. Yep. And it's really good at chasing uh, new 5GC in meat. So it's a, a double bonus win. Yeah, it turns out that there are bacteria that really like to eat new right. 5GC. When I was first researching this, I said, 
gosh, we have bacteria in our colon that will eat new 5 gc And I go, well, that's great. Unfortunately, new 5 gc is absorbed higher up in our intestines yeah. before it ever gets there. So we gotta, like you found out, you gotta get the bacteria into these meats to eat it before it gets to us. Right. And one of the things that when I was writing the longevity paradox and gut check that always intrigued me is a lot of these super long-lived people around the world, they eat a lot of sausages and salamis and prosciutto. And I'm going, that doesn't make any sense. They ought to be dead as doornails. They ought to be you know, riddled with cancer. They ought to have heart disease. In fact, Toulouse, France, I mean, they eat foie gras, they eat sausages, cassoulet, and they have the lowest heart disease rate in wow. all of France. So what the heck? Well, you're right. The research shows that these guys, these cultures have always fermented their meats. Right. And it's beneficial. And in fact, there's really great bacteria in prosciutto, believe right. it or not. And, Absolutely. And the byproducts of bacterial fermentation, postbiotic. Right. All right, so I threw down the gauntlet at you, and you said, oh, I love a challenge. That's right. All right, what did you come up with? So we went through and did extensive testings on the lactobacillus uh, Lactobacillus, make That's it right. easy. And <laughs> just really uh, identified ones that were really happy, that really liked to party, and they liked to party like crazy. So we created cultures. It's like making sourdough bread, where you actually are you know, making bread, where the yeast starts to foam over, it's super active. So we created very high activity levels in the meat so that it could get through all of the surfaces and structures in a very short amount of time. And during that side process, it also increases the acid level. Um, and that way we could get through USDA certification so the meat remained safe during those culturing phases. So that was really the trick. And it took us a while to find the exact parts of it that worked like magic. And when we found it, we are not just decreasing, we are decreasing the new 5GC, but we're extensively decreasing it to almost nothing yeah. compared to sausage, which is maybe at best a 30% drop. You're a protein biochemist, which is crazy, but this is, you actually like doing this. It was awesome. It was a great challenge to understand how all these things work. I know we talked personally, but how is your beef raised? How is your pork raised? And then how do you make it taste the way people want it to taste? So these are all coming from American farms, uh, predominantly in northern Colorado and Nebraska. And it's right around the, the great grasslands of the Pawnee National Grassland oh, Preserve, yeah. right in that whole area there. Uh, the cattle are raised completely on grasses. Uh, they move around, you know, as the grasses mature because that has more nutrients and flavors. So there are four hoof, you know, collection, micronutrient collection devices out there. Um, they're harvested in the United States right out in that same area. A complete chain of command directly to our smokehouse. And that's when we start to, you know, do our magic on it. So tell us about your meat box that feeds people, not a disease, as right. your website says. Well, the meat box is a, you can either get a combo pack, which is like brisket and hot dogs and burger, or you can get just straight brisket now, or just straight hot dogs, and soon brats and other items and meat sticks too are on the way as we get through labeling. And I should mention too, that all the beef products are a single breed Angus. Angus came out of Northern Scotland in the late, early 1900s. It's been developed into its beautiful texture by natural selection. And so we're breed specific, we're farm specific, we're diet specific, no antibiotics, no hormones, no lectins, no gluten. You know, we got the whole shooting match and obviously greatly diminished new 5GC content. All right, now uh, your box is fantastic and uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, but for those listening, you know, I recommend you order a JR Ranch meat box to try for yourselves, but give us some tips on how people at home 
can lessen their exposure to new 5GC. Well, if you're out shopping and you're looking for, obviously, fermented sausages, that's really the only place that's occurring out there today. If it says on the label that it has a starter culture, or if it has, it lists lacto, lacto, you know, on the label, that type of thing, then you know that it's been truly fermented. Uh, because curing is not culturing. They're Correct. two different things. So if you see a cultured product, you're on target, like a yogurt or such like that, versus a curing is not the same procedure at all. Yeah. In fact, I've noticed, I tell my patients to look for like lactic acid cultures, right. lactobacillus. And I've noticed some companies are getting wise and they're actually, unfortunately, putting lactic acid. That's not a lactic no. acid culture. No, that's yeah. a byproduct. Yeah. So be careful out there. Companies will always try to figure out a way around this thing. So the other question, I just got back from uh, Omaha, Nebraska, my hometown. What does dry aging or wet aging have to do with this process? Well, the dry aging and wet aging process really, you know, allows the acid that's in the meat after harvest, you know, because all the blood turns to acid, that type of situation, it allows it to settle down and become more tender and more tasty. But it absolutely does nothing to the new 5GC. Oh no man, effect. even if all those mold and funguses are growing on the outside? No, oh. <laughs> unfortunately no. Good news, believe it or not, fish, shellfish and chicken uh, are new 5AC. But uh, please, please, please look for pastured chicken and find out what the heck they're feeding their pastured chicken because right. the labeling laws are not very friendly about that. Right. And um, you're a huge fan of oysters. Yes. Uh, for, for lots of reasons. You, Love them. You and your wife, Joe Marie, apparently can kill off a couple dozen oysters at a, at a time. Absolutely. So, and oysters are really good for us, right? Yes. Uh, as long as they're in season in the right spot. So oysters are, are a good choice as well. All right, can we, uh, you might, you, sure. you've been busy. Can we sample this? So sure, what, what do we got? So we have the, the brisket here, which is the Angus brisket. It's called a Texas cut because it's a flat. The brisket is actually two muscles. It has a piece on one end that's called a deckle that has a big piece of fat running through it, which is lovely. We have the deckle removed from our artisan butchers so that you get a, you know, a very clean cut of. I meat. always want my deckle removed. That's right, take the deckle that. off. Yeah. Take your deckle and Then we off. also have the Angus beef <laughs> hot dogs, all Angus, all beef, that situation. You, you know. make a great brisket. And so after we actually do the culturing, we then have to stop the culture. So we actually slow cook it at very low temperatures for the brisket goes almost 18 hours. And we keep it at temperatures that allow above 160, which allows the connective tissues to start to break down. But at 160, you're not driving out any of the moisture or juices out of the meat. So it's really some spectacular products and it's applied to all the different items that way. We have a bratwurst, we have a hot dog. I think Penny loves the hot dogs. Oh, she loves the hot dogs. So you my should wife, try some hot dogs. My wife hates hot dogs, but she loves Jimmy's hot dogs. And this is food you love that loves you back. That's one right. of our favorite things. That's what sayings. we've been working on, yeah. on all kinds of products, it's, like the bars and such. Yeah, like the bars, food you love that That's loves right. you back. So, oh man, folks, this is great. Now, I lived in Milwaukee for a few years and a bratwurst, you know, is a requirement. Right, well, I think you'll like the brats. There's some pieces on that far okay. side there. I have not yeah. had his bratwurst yet. There you and, go. Oh, thank you. Thank I'll you very yeah, I didn't yeah. use that for it. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. All right. So one thing I've noticed, because I tell my patients to order from you, and unfortunately, I haven't invested in Jimmy's company. I want to keep myself. So he's not paying me anything to do this. But you got to go to JR Ranch Foods. Foods with an S, dot com. If you go to JR Ranch, you'll end up on JR Ranch's place, which That's is right. not you. Right. Yeah. And so, if you look up our quasi trademark copyright, is Beef with Benefits. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, the fake meat people grabbed that for themselves, believe it or not, on the internet. So, JR Ranch Foods. 
5GCTalk.com and you'll find us. And the complete story is in there and you can learn more about new 5GC. And, you know, you're listed as, you know, a mentor on it as well. Thank you very much for guiding us down this road. And thank you for this brat work. Try the brat. See if we're... Mm. I think we, we, we got it. Mm -hmm, I think so. This long cooking process develops the umami flavor. And umami, as you know, are broken protein chains. And those protein chains are identifiable. We have a fifth taste sense that allows us to grab it and identify it. It's that sweet, savory flavor like you find in a pot roast or in aged Parmesan cheese or soy sauce, that type of thing, anything that's been fermented. And it also makes the proteins more bioavailable for digestion, but it has this deeper, richer flavor without being rich. And by the way, there's no new 5GC in aged Parmesan cheese. Right. But please, it's got to come from Italy. Don't, it's not the stuff that comes out of the green package. <laughs> that it's you not. Should. For those of you who don't know, Jimmy, can you share a little bit of background for us? How, do, how did you get into this? I'm originally from the farmlands of central Illinois, and I was a good studying student in electrical engineering. I decided that to take my language credits, I would do it abroad in France. And as a you know, resourceful student, uh, I took cooking classes and wine classes so I could eat and drink every day. On properly. My, right, properly on my student budget. And I fell in love with the whole food and wine scene over there. I followed my uh, principal instructor back to uh, Boston, uh, Madeline Kamen, and worked with her for a number of years before moving on to Detroit to the famous London Chop House. And this is back in the beginning of the emergence of American cuisine. So I reached out to all the local farmers. I got 4-H people to grow foods for us and really started to develop um, a menu that had American ingredients and American taste sensibility. And that was really recognized for the first Beard Award for the emergence of the American cuisine. And this was back in the 80s, right? This was back in the 80s, a long time ago. And we were out foraging for cattails and ramps and morels and all these wonderful things that are now quite popular today. Actually, I was at the University of Michigan training as a surgical resident, and the London Chop House was the place to go, uh, even from Ann Arbor, we would drive in there. Right. And we didn't know each other back then. I wish we did. I sure do. I could have gotten a free fun. meal, maybe. Absolutely, absolutely. You and I, actually, let's spend a second. How in the heck did we get introduced? Do you remember? Absolutely. Well, after the London Chop House, I went on to build rattlesnake clubs in Denver and Detroit and Washington, D.C., and in Palm Springs, closer back to you. And so I was invited to be on a panel discussion with you from the American Heart Association. So I came to cook and foods that were heart healthy, and you were there to, you know, follow what, what I was doing and explain why it was heart healthy. And we became fast friends after that. Now, you've been committed to health for the community for as long as I've known you, and before that. You've got a new partnership with the Children's Hospital? Well, actually, you know, the hot dogs, you know, are going into St. Jude's Hospital. They, we sent them down to try it. And the kids, when they're in treatment, they need comfort food. And what's more comforting than a hot dog? And we're working through the normal food service to get it in there right now to fill out all the forms. But the kids eat a hot dog. It gives them the nourishment of all the, you know, the great beef and such. But without the new 5GC that is, contributes to their illnesses yeah. and such. And that's actually how we were able to test for it is I found a doctor that was testing for a new 5GC as a biomarker for cancer, for cancer. in children. Yep. And so that's how we found it, not through the traditional testing resources. As we learn more about new 5GC, we know now, for instance, cancer cells, human cancer cells, can't make new 5GC but new 5GC is found in most tumors. It turns out cancer cells use new 5GC to produce local inflammation, and that local inflammation actually changes the pH and changes yeah. the oxygen level, and it actually allows the cancer cells to kind of escape and grow. So, and they can't make it, which means it had to come from our diet. Absolutely. And that's why it's really exciting for like St. Jude's because 
they want these foods. The regular foods may, I'm just saying may, be contributing yeah. to the growth of those cancer cells. So what a great combination. Well, that's ideally the foods that you love that don't mess with you at least. <laughs> exactly. Jimmy and I, like I say, have known each other for a long time now. And every time you get excited about something, I usually say, but wait. And I you know. go, oh, yeah, well, I'm <laughs> going to show you. That's right. And good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, so what's up next for JR Ranch Foods? Well, we're gonna continue to work through different cuts and such now that we've got this culturing down working really well so you can get your steak and grill it too, that kind of thing. Um, they will be, we do take them through the slow cook cycle, you know, which is important so you can bounce it across your grill or throw it through your microwave and it's, you're there, which is wonderful. And so, I mean, this hamburger has been sitting there naked on a piece of lettuce. Detoxified. Well, uh, we are working on, you know, which you've already tried, a lectin gluten-free bun. Oh, yeah. But most importantly, it's higher in protein. Higher in protein and lower in carbs. So, you know, bread is the staff of life, everybody said, but usually was very <laughs> hollow calories and such, even to a point where the government had to enrich it at one point because it was so poor. So this will actually be like a super bread. So you're getting, you know, more benefit out of the protein content and such like that. Yeah. So yeah, stay tuned because uh, I've had Jimmy's bread buns and uh, boy, would they go well with this. That would be great. But hey, I like a lettuce wrap. This is the way to do it, folks. Um, and you can get butter lettuce kind of everywhere now. And it, it works perfect for that. So everybody's probably wondering, does New 5GC give a flavor? Or if you take the New 5GC out, does it change the flavor? Well, you can't really taste New 5GC. So the removal is, you know, unperceptible. The process uh, is, does increase the acid level of the meat. So it does have a more brightness to it, which I find delicious. And through the cooking process, that is then again modified, you know, to break down as well, too. I love bright meat. Well, it's, it's actually very rich. It has more dimensional flavor and increased umami, which is that sweet, savory thing going on. So you're going kind of from one level of flavor to like three. As we've been talking, you're, you're basically a winemaker yeah. with, with beef, aren't you? Absolutely. It's the same thing with making wine. The different, you know, fermentation of the wine absolutely affects the flavor, the depth, the polyphenols, everything. The sugar content. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's exactly what we're doing with the, with the meat. And I know a lot of winemakers who will purposely stop the fermentation at a particular level to preserve a little bit of sugar content. Right. Um, so you're just a, you're a beef winemaker or... <laughs> yeah, that's another way to look at it. Yeah, okay. So why can't I get a pound of ground beef and open up a capsule of Gundry MD 24 strain probiotic and sprinkle it in there and let it sit around? Well, although I, I love your probiotics, I think that they are absolutely the best on the market. It is ineffective in, you know, removing Neo5 GC from the meat. The, the big thing about it is, is that you have to create this culture. You have to get the uh, probiotics to grow into a giant culture. It has to go through a period of time to accomplish its goal, and then it has to be stopped. So this is a multi-hour complex process that temperature and time have to be exactly monitored. And let's reiterate, you had to prove to the USDA that what you're saying is true. I had to prove to the USDA that we could accomplish these tasks and deliver certain pH levels, which is what are monitored within certain periods of time to be able to get the meat out of the plant. Otherwise, it's destroyed. And I assume that's a lot of jumping through hoops. It is. It's a total new educational process. So you and I have collaborated on a number of products for Gundry MD, um, mm -hmm. food you love that loves you back. Exactly. And tell me about the latest one that's almost ready. Well, it's your new Dr. Gundry pistachio Snickers bar, oh, yes. which is absolutely delicious. And I applaud you because this is going to be the first commercialized use of yeast protein, yeah. which is a higher bioavailability than milk protein. 
in a bar along with flax protein that makes up the nougat core instead of the lovely butter and sugar that's usually there. We have an inulin-based caramel, which is a fiber-based caramel. Totally delicious, totally good for you instead of the sugar version. And of course, polyphenol-rich, enriched dark chocolate to coat it and it eats like a million bucks. And as a matter of fact, we actually had that uh, at the natural product show, you know, some models of it, and at the International Food Technology Show, and we got an innovation award for that as well. So we're the first ones on the planet to go down that road with uh, yeast protein. That's fantastic. And it is vegan too, by the way. Perfect. Uh, now, we didn't mention this, but That's I see right. these uh, beef sticks over here. Well, this is your other snacking pleasure when you're not looking for something that's sweet, but that's savory. So this uses the same technology. These are completely cultured, all Angus, all grass-fed, no may, bad stuff, absolutely. So when you're on the run, instead of grabbing that, you know, Snickers to get rid of your, you know, your hangry, you grab one of these, you get great protein delivery, no added sugar, all that kind of thing. These are shelf stable. You can keep them on your counter, grab one out the door, you're good to go. Perfect. And this is this is actually kind of a spicier version of the, the, of hot, the hot dogs. Dog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, can I steal some from Penny, my wife? Oh, absolutely. I got all a bag for you. Uh, all right. Thank you. Well, the new bar that we're just coming out with is a pistachio Snickers bar, and instead of the traditional sugar and butter nougat core, we're making it out of the uh, yeast-based protein, which is a higher delivery of protein than even uh, milk isolates, along with flax protein to make a delicious nougat core. It's encased with a inulin-based caramel, which is a fiber-based caramel, which is a whole lot of fun, and then covered with a polyphenol-rich dark chocolate that just eats like a million bucks, and it's nothing but good. It doesn't have any added sugars, it's low in carbs, um, and it uh, you know, fits all kinds of diets, and most importantly, it tastes great. And it doesn't cost a million bucks either. Right. <laughs> Tastes like a million bucks. What should we look for? I mean, there are preserved meats or sausages that are safe. And how do you find them? When you pick up that salami at the grocery store, uh, what are you looking for on the label? Well, when you go shopping at your local market, you got to read the label. And on the label, it should say things. And it'll probably be one of the last ingredients is like starter culture, lactic acid culture, or, you know, the actual bacteria name, which is the lactobactobacillus, or those mentionings on it. That way you know that it is a cultured product. A cured meat product is completely different, has nothing to do with the fermentation to reduce new 5GC. Beyond that, that's really where you should focus um, your efforts in making a great meal. This is so exciting. Uh, would you mind joining me in the audience question? Every, sure, every podcast. We have an audience question, and this comes from quite a few folks since Gut Check came out. I get questions a lot about unconventional meats that might or might not have new 5GC. And I know you've, <laughs> you've searched everything that I've sent you and been on your own. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, how about kangaroo meat? Well, funny enough, kangaroo does not have new 5GC, believe it or not. Yeah. And, and neither does rabbits. Rabbits are extremely low. Yeah, so those are two options. Right, uh, but you gotta take tiger, bear, antelope, buffalo off the list. They all have it. Yeah, unfortunately, bison does have new 5GC. And you mentioned something very important. It turns out the liver of these animals have the highest Absolutely. new 5GC content. Right, the liver and some of the other organs are highly concentrated in it. Yeah. And um, you know, probably because they work so hard and such like that. So that's not a place to go. So uh, how about alligator? Uh, I've had that down in New Orleans. Well, first of all, it's not a mammal. And second of all, I could not find anybody that wants to go out and get a test off an off alligator. Probably not. Probably <laughs> not. Nope, sorry. Couldn't find anybody to buy that. Now, I did find, because of several of my patients who are hunters, that deer probably is low in new 5GC. Yes, it is lower in new 5GC. But as one of my hunter friends just recently told 
me, he doesn't eat a lot of it because of the prion problem in deer. Yeah. Uh, mad cow disease, for those of you who worry about prion diseases. And deer, unfortunately, are infected with, quote, mad cow disease. So even though it doesn't have a lot of new 5GC, just be cautious out there. That's right. And last but not least, milk products, even sheep and goats, have lots of new 5GC in their milk. Right, and also cheeses that are made from them as well. Correct, unless they're right. fermented, truly exactly. fermented. Truly fermented. And so a lot of cheeses aren't fermented, right. um, sadly. Yeah. yeah. So just got to be careful. All right. Well, that's it for today. Uh, Jimmy and I are going to quit. And uh, this is all for us. Uh, that's right. No, we've got a, a staff that's just looking at us. So they're creeping up slowly. And stop drooling, would you? Okay. I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you. And Jimmy Schmidt has found a way to have your meat and eat it too. See you next week. Thanks so much for watching, but don't go anywhere. This next one is sure to surprise you. Raw white button mushrooms appear all the time in my patient's food sensitivity. Now here's some ones that are really going to surprise you. Ginger appears all the time. Pineapple appears all the time. Peaches appear all the time.